This is Twip. I just, I just really want to get through this year with everybody uh, being safe and healthy. I mean, you know, Merry Christmas, yes, Happy Holidays, like, you know, enjoy all that. But in reality, right now, it's just let's get through this turmoil safe and healthy so we can have all of our debates and arguments and conversations and uh, sharings on the, uh, on the other side. Let's just yeah. get to the other side. Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree. And with that, let's go to the other side of this opening, which is the actual critique that we're here for. So let's, <laughs> let's dive into that. I put you in your, in your little bubble there, Troy. So I'm in my bubble. Yes. You're in the bubble. You're in a bubble. So, and we're sharing the Twip Pro community here. I'm going to go ahead and dive into groups and to our photo critique group. And then within the photo critique group, I'm going to sort it by day created. So last in is first to be discussed. And look who made it in. Peter Levshin. Oh, man. 15 minutes ago, Peter Levshin posted this one. All right, here we go. Take us off. <laughs> and it's a thumbnail. <laughs> I can barely see this thing. It's <laughs> tiny. Let me see if I can zoom it. Can I zoom it? Yeah, I can zoom in a little bit. Let's see if I can bring it up. There we go. All right, that's it. I can only go 250%. Oh, we had we had three submissions in the last 17 minutes. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you know why? Because the email goes out 30 minutes before, and people are like, oh, oh, oh crap, yeah. I got to get my email. Yeah, that's it. It's all you people doing your homework at the last minute. We see you. We see you. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you what do you think of Peter Levshin's uh, image? And did you have anything to do with this shot? Uh, I had nothing to do with this shot. I don't even know. I don't. E I've never even seen this. I don't even recognize this. Um, it's it's very interesting. It's a very easy interesting take. You know, I, I don't know who it is. I don't know the person or anything. So. I wish it was bigger. I wish we had more resolution, Peter. What yeah. You, what you, dude, what I is know. This? this is like a pixel. This is a pixel. <laughs> it's like one pixel. Yeah. 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 I don't know what's going yeah. on here. I'm leaving this one to you because I can't I can't tell. Like you say, the lower the resolution's low. And I'm not sure what's happening here, which is why I asked you if you asked you if you had any insight on this one. So I'm leaving it to you. Troy Miller. <laughs> I think that uh, I think it's a fun photo. I think that in a in a portrait, though, and you know, in a, in a, in, a, in the sense of a portrait, that the person or the something needs to be identifiable. Maybe maybe that's not the case. Um, mm -hmm. But in this case, like I I can't really see who this might be. It's an interesting. It's it's kind of a snapshot. Sorry, but that's it's it's you know it's not sophisticated. There's no direction of lighting. There's no focus. Um, I think Peter was in a hurry. I don't know. Yep. Or Peter's testing us. He's like, I want to see if they give us positive comments <clears throat> on something that, you know, that's on the edge of being a picture. That's what he, he knows better. He knows yeah. better. Don't test us, Peter Legend. Don't test us. Yeah. No. It's a fun shot, and I appreciate it as, a, as an abstract portrait. I think, it's, I think it's great. Yeah. Let me zoom out. Peter's destroying my whole screen here. Okay. Here yeah. <laughs> All right, Peter Levshin, thank you for that shot. And next up is Eric Pronsky, wife in the Texas flag. All right, let's bring up wife in the oh, Texas wow. flag. That's cool. Look at that. Yeah, that's very cool. And that's very abstract. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think that from the, the portrait aspect of this or the idea that, um, you know, we might want to focus on the, the portrait element that the red and the blue colors are, are more distracting. So I might make those a smaller portion of the frame uh, so that they're they're not immediately obvious what they might be, you know, save a little point of the star and save a little bit of the shape of the flag with the colors. Um, and then and then a little bit more of the portrait in there. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's like which the when I look at this, I think. I absolutely think Texas, of course, because it's the Texas flag and, and every most people know that this is the layout of the Texas flag. Um, but then I feel like I'm competing with Texas and and the the portrait 
in the shot i'd want to see more of the portrait and less of the the flag the flag is going to dominate regardless so maybe the flag is is more subdued in the background and acts more of a background versus having her in the the white quadrant of the flag maybe she's dominant in the image in the background you know is the flag or and it's blurry or something because even blurry mm -hmm. i'd know that this is texas right so there's something right, right. something less literal i think right Right. I agree. I agree. Um, but then, you know, this this really kind of comes across from the artist. If the artist is really just wanting to show more of the Texas, right? We want to we emphasize Texas, um, then it works. But I think in the category of abstract portrait, I think that we want to focus on the face a little bit more, kind of bring yeah. make that a little bit larger portion. And you could just crop Absolutely. this. I mean, you could literally just crop it and you you, you would achieve that. Yeah, like right, like right here, actually. Like, do we need to see the star to know that's Texas? Uh, maybe, I don't know. I'd, I'd battle with that because without the star, it becomes more of just American flag colors, you know, and you would know. You just think it might be a close-up of an American flag somehow. So you might need some of that star in there. So maybe, but not all of it. So maybe it's just a portion of the star and then lose some of the bottom here and then bring the, bring the, the, the portrait up uh into it so yeah there's a lot to be done here i like it though this is cool you got it yep. all right next shot up is from stephen sharf stephen sharf says never ever piss off a mountain lion coloma the rescued mountain lion at <laughs> oakland zoo is disgruntled yeah nothing worse than a disgruntled and or hungry mountain lion <laughs> or both right <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, Steve, you know, we made comment about, you know, the email going out and Stephen said his his late submission was due to Photoshop crashing. Uh, which have Photoshop you and I saw. Yeah, I see that thread in there. Are you have you're having trouble with Photoshop, too? Is this big sir related? It's, uh, no, it's just 21. It's just oh. it's just crashing like crazy. Yeah. There's oh, well. lots of tools that don't work. And so wait, um, is it? It's Photoshop that. 21, not Capture 121? No, it's Photoshop 2021. Uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Can't even run can't even run things like liquify and some of the basic filters. Um, oh, no. But all their neural filters seem to to function for some reason. So <laughs> Imagine Maybe that. they're trying to drive everyone to the cloud for processing. That's what it is. I don't know. I it's Oh god, don't even get me started on that whole thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a whole show right there talking about the neural filters and, and cloud-based heavy-handed processing, which is scary. Yeah, Very scary. yeah, yeah. Um, I love the portrait, the Stephen. Uh, I like this a lot. I like the solarization and I like the warpage uh, that it feels like you've done to the to the whiskers and things like that. Um, if Photoshop was behaving and you had more time, I would take out that little piece of wall. On the right, I, I think that mm -hmm. I think that you know there's a lot of black there that we could just fill in <clears throat> and get rid of that. So I feel like that's a bit distracting, but um, that that mountain lion does not look happy. So <laughs> no, no, he's he, he's definitely uh, you know not wanting whatever he's looking at to be around much longer. And I agree, I agree. The the removal of the brick wall or the the wall on the the left of the mountain lion would be. Right, camera right. Give it more correct. emphasis. Yeah, camera right. Um, but then also punching in a little bit on that face because it's all about the anger and the expression on that face. So the body, the body down here, I don't really need to see too much more of that. I know what's down there. So if we if we cropped in a little tighter there, maybe a little tighter closer to the ears, just to bring us into uh, the face here versus the, the the abyss back here in the bricks, which are taking away. Even if it's even if it's a small amount, it's still taking away from the, what. Um, I believe Stephen intended, which is to look at the look at this face and the distortion that he applied to it. So, and the right. distortion works in the case of this this whole critique topic, which is abstract portraiture. So he's definitely gone abstract with this. But I think it would have been more obvious if we punched in more and we could see more of the waves and what he did um, to distort the animal a little bit. Right, right. And you know something else that, that could be done with this that's also uh, fun is to crop the mountain lion's face right in half and just keep mm. the left half of the image. And oh, yeah. You get right there. A nice little, I mean, the abstract element would certainly increase 
and I think that it I think that it would have a really nice appeal. Just mm-hmm. crop it. Maybe I don't know. You'd have to kind of play with how much of the nose. Like I like the crease in the nose, but you'd have to kind of play with it and see just how much of that you're gonna save. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Good idea. All right. Thank you, Stephen Scharf. And Stephen Scharf wants us to know that it is a she because that's going to change things. <laughs> All right. Nora's monotonous is up next. Nora says, some days you feel invisible. Let's bring this up. I like this a lot. Yeah. I like this a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> Reminds me of the face of Bo from Doctor Who. <clears throat> what show is that? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what show are you referring to? Doctor... Okay. That's okay. Wait, wait, Doctor Who? <laughs> The, the Whovians, they got my reference. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh, there's a whole name for the group of people that follow Doctor Who? Yeah. <laughs> Whovians, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. No, no. <laughs> uh, get all those people over to Mandalorian. <laughs> oh, jeez. Don't even start that topic either. I know. I better um, not. All right. No. Thoughts? Nor is not his image here. What, what do you think? I I really really enjoy uh, this image a lot. I I would love to see it centered more. I feel like it's you know it's definitely off to camera left a little bit, so yeah. there's no reason why it shouldn't be completely centered. A little bit more eyebrow over camera left eye, but other than that, I I love that that element of it. Just you know those main elements of of the face floating in there. Mm-hmm. It's very 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 cool. Yeah. What about the the color? Because there's there's some magenta kind of splashes in there, magenta red, uh, kind of maroonish colors in there. Would you have left those in there, or would you just kind of made the whole thing monochromatic? I I I don't know, and that's what I was about to say. Is I'm I'm a little I'm a little conflicted on the color that's in there. Um, I kind of like it from an abstract point of view. I wish it was a, a a little bit less pixely and a little bit more painterly, a little smoother in how it blends in if it's intentional. Um, I would play with it. I really would. I I like the the uh, introduction of color. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it it could go either way. I think it, it's it, it's more intriguing with that splash of color in there because it kind of pulls you in and makes you think, why is that color there? Clearly, this is mostly right. monochromatic. Why is that splash of color in there? You know, so yeah, yeah, it's a very it's a very very fun portrait, and I really like this. It's a good it's a very good play on uh, the abstract portraits. You could do a whole series of somebody like this. This is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a series of people, like all kinds of things, yep. a series of different races, a series of different kinds of people, men, women, kids. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good technique. Yeah. You remove everything except for the most powerful elements. Mm-hmm. And these are the, yeah, these are the ele- elements that uh, that uh, what do you call it? Those filters that that detect humans and features and track us in airports. This is what they see, right? <laughs> so, right. Oh, you know see. what I'm playing with, right? Uh, is is crop this just below the eyes and take? Do you have two horizontal images now of just the eyes and then just the nose and the mouth? And then you hang them next to each other as a wall portrait. Mm. That would be big. cool. Printed big, right? And then you yeah. put a price tag of yeah. of, of twenty seven thousand dollars on it for each one. <laughs> yeah, for each one. Yeah. 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 Or or fifty thousand together purchased as a set. Four grand. Yeah, we'll give you a discount. <laughs> yeah, slight discount. Cool. Very cool. Thank you, Nora. Appreciate that. Some yeah, days you not. feel invisible. Ain't that truth? All right. Michael Rhino's up next. Michael Rhino says, I struggle to find any of my photos that fit the abstract portrait category. So I went out and caught this photo of an unusual pose of a large bull elk last night in Evergreen, Colorado. Imagine that. Just having to having the ability to go out and say, <laughs> yeah, I need a shot. Let me let me go capture this 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 majestic animal real quick before dinner. <laughs> Right, right, yeah. Let me let me go say hi to Rudolph. I'm just gonna go uh-huh. here, Rudolph. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, for sure. 
I love the I love the portrait, but I I do want to say, Michael Rhino, <clears throat> that in your description you said you struggled to find a photo, so you went out and photographed, um, uh, you know, a bull elk. You couldn't have photographed a person instead, mm -hmm. or even yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just gonna like you looked for a person and went out and photographed an elk. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they're more elk where he is than people. So. <laughs> well, yes, and I'm sure that uh, the elk are more agreeable than some people, so I can't fault him for that. I mean, true to go out, true would be great. Yeah, I'd, I'd, and most times I'd much rather hang out with this guy than humans. So <laughs> I get <Right>. it. <laughs> But look uh, at that expression. Pretty... Look at the expression and the, the the tongue and the eye on this. So, what, what do you think of that? I, know. I think it's wonderful. I think that this is a, a super fun shot. I think this should be your Christmas card uh, for next year. Definitely, you got room for some text in the upper left hand corner, in between the antlers. Um, but I, I love the the comical nature and the abstract nature of this shot. Uh, with the eyes and the tongue and the twist of the head. Uh, it's good. It's really good. Yeah. 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 And you don't no, have to socially cool. distance from the elk, which uh, Ginger Bearding pointed out. So good point. Good point. <laughs> you do not. Not yet. You know, so who knows? <laughs> Pretty st strain two means it affects animals. No, this is cool. I like this. I like this a lot. Um, yeah, I, I agree with everything you said, Troy. Um, I, the the only thing I struggle with, and it's not really a struggle, is I want to see more of his or her face, his face. Yeah, I want to see more of his face in here because this is interesting with the tongue licking out, you know, the eyeball. He's clearly feels like he's looking in the direction of the camera. He's being silly. Uh, I want to see that the all this land mass and the the background and the sides over here. I feel like those pixels aren't helping me. Uh, so maybe, but I want the antlers in there. So maybe it's just a, a case of punching in a little bit, just so that we get a little bit more of the face and right. less of the less of the hillside back there. But in either case, it's really cool. Yeah, I think you're right. This would be a great this would be a great postcard. Yeah, and and to your to your recommendation, some dodging and burning. You know, you could do, mm -hmm. dodge down the rear end of the of the or burn down the rear end of the elk, and then just dodge around the face. Bring the you know bring some light into the face, which it would be yeah. really easy to do in post. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, he's looks like he's got a, a broken antler. This guy's been in battle. You see that on the left? Yeah. yeah. I just think Mike taunting us that he can go outside in the nature in the snow and photograph elk. I think that yes. Is just that's what he's trying to say. He's trying to say this is he my social. We're in California. <laughs> this, is, and, this is the and Colorado version like of social distancing right here. <laughs> yeah, we're like the epicenter of hell right now. So that's right. That's right. We are very cool. Nice yeah, portrait. Thank you, Mike. All right. Next up, Craig Stamfley. He calls this one wet abstract. Nice. Definitely abstract. There's a lot going on here. This is this is cool. I love the colors. I love the contrast. I love the fact that it's underwater. I love the fact that she's kind of just chilling there, clearly underwater, enjoying herself, uh, but she can't breathe that stuff. Uh, that's that's really interesting. I love the the color the color palette with the fire reds and the greens up top right, and then the cooler tones on the on the left side. I think it it all kind of works together. There's that color palette again, Troy. There's that that uh <laughs> the warm and cool <laughs> color <Diane>. interplay <laughs> yeah. what do you think yeah um i love the shot i i really 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 do i think that a little bit of dodging and burning um could help us a lot where we've got a bright orange spot on the right we've got that bright white on the we'll call it a scarf on the left i think that is drawing our attention away from our main subject which is more more of the face um if you wanted to kind of keep all that stuff going, I mean, that's that's OK, too. But what is that? There's some like weird striations in the cloth on the far left. I wonder if that's just. Oh, down here. Uh, above that, above that, oh, th a little these bit. guys, right at the bubbles or are these that. Yeah, I don't know what those what those vertical striations are. It almost look like a comb, you know, like a veil comb or something. But oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I hadn't even noticed that. Yeah, it looks it looks a little crunchy too. It looks like it may have been um, 
pushed. I, I think that what I would do with this image, and, and I love all of the abstractness in it, is um, I might try black and white. And really? Oh. More moody. Yeah, and really just bring down all the tones except for her face, maybe her right shoulder, you know, lead us through the journey of the image. More of like a film noir, you know. Mm -hmm. if, if not that, really, really push these colors a little further, um, a little darker and a little more saturated. Really bring out that, that cyan and that magenta in there and, and really give it more of an abstract color palette. Make the color more of the subject, part of the subject. Yeah, yeah, like lean into it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And maybe I, punch I, in I'm a little bit too, it. right? Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, I like the crop. I'm not a huge fan of the negative space in the top right. I think we can mm -hmm. do something with that. Yeah. Um, but the particles uh, in the water, whether they're real or added, look really, really great. Mm -hmm. uh, it creates a, a good layer of depth. Um, no, I it love puts it. us underwater. It does, yeah. And And, you know, in a swimming pool or even in the ocean, there's particulate matter uh, all the time that you have to deal with. So if there was a strobe on camera, you'll pick up a lot of the particles. Yeah. Yeah, when I look at this shot, I, I see it divided diagonally into warmer tones on the right side and cooler tones on the left side. Um, and then when I look at the left side, like I don't need that much data to get that that's a flowing cloth. So I would, I would wanna maybe crop like this and like, cause I don't need all of her body down there either. Cause it's about her face and her expression. Right. So I would crop in, we can lose some of that cloth. I feel like we don't need all of her body in there and then crop up here. So then it becomes more about her face and more about her being underwater. And the only other thing I would have considered, um, was this, this highlight right underneath her nose is distracting right underneath her nose there. So I try to maybe knock that back a little bit so that it's not so right. bright. Uh, other than that, that's a, it's cool. Cool shot. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful portrait and wonderful abstract, wonderful play on that whole, that whole element. Very well done. Mm -hmm. Well done. Dig it. Dig it. Like I hate my steaks. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Craig Stampley. Thank you, sir. And then we have Freddy Sedano. Freddy says, La Catarina, Señor de los Muertos. The Lady of Shadows guides, uh, guides our lost souls into Zibala, Zibabla, Zibalba, the underworld. Somewhere in the underworld. Great, great job trying to pronounce that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm on, I'm on cup of coffee number one, so my, my diction engines oh. haven't kicked in yet. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> you need at least two. You gotta have at least two cup, two cups of coffee to uh, to fire up the nacelles. <laughs> oh, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. I'm on. Uh, I'm on a cup of tea one. So yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Cool. A cool shot. Uh, this this is something that I think traditionally feels like it should be uh, black and white. I mean, it's a it's an image that would play very strong in black and white and and when i say traditionally is because i sort of picture this in that again in that film noir fashion mm -hmm. um but as it's delivered to us uh i i really i really like it it's not very abstract though you know it's a yeah. it's a nice costume yeah it's great makeup and you know the the good lighting the vertical row of dots is really driving me nuts because you're one, your brain. Yeah, I was gonna say that your brain is wondering where they are, why are they there, what are they connected to, why are you, why, are you, why do you deserve to take up pixels in my image, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. What's your justification for being here? <laughs> exactly. Show me your papers. <laughs> yeah. You have no reason to be here. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Um, I also wish in the lower left hand quadrant that that one either we we totally give in to the darkness and we t we bring the exposure down even on her face so just her eyes really come out with a little bit of her face or we bring some detail into the lower left corner because it's just it's just pure black so really we kind of get this sense of the floating head 
mm-hmm. and <clears throat> we need a we need more of a foundation. So you could almost you could almost crop it, you know, crop that bottom half of all that darkness like, off, and like down work. here, like right there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The dots, I 100% agree with. Um, if there was something that, that some data that connected us to those dots, so that that connected the dots, so that we'd know why they were there, um, other than just a compositional element, um, or even as a compositional element, if they had a reason for being in there, then that would make it easier. But barring that, if you lose the dots in there for me, then then this becomes an abyss. Like if you clone out all those dots, then it's like, all this black wasted pixels around her. I want to <laughs> get in closer since we don't have to worry about the dots. And I want to get in closer and see the detail of the, the makeup on, on the model here. And then, like you said, this abyss down at the bottom, we don't really need that. Um, maybe a little bit. I see if he's, if he's trying to evoke the feeling of this ghostly, ghastly face emerging from darkness, then you want an abyss of darkness for her to emerge from. But I don't think it right. needs to be that much, you know, because you're then she becomes small in the frame and it kind of short circuits the intent. But yeah, and I and I think in images like this, I think where some of the struggle is, is the is the depth where how, how, we don't really get a sense of depth in this because we don't have a foreground, middle ground, background, whether it's a lighting elements, focus, colors, it's a very stark. So mm-hmm. you got to really either play to that or consider, you know, what what's going to tell me that there's a background in yeah. a foreground. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Interesting though. Interesting. Cool. Interesting. That's, interesting that's, take on using using um uh what did what did he call it? What was the the celebration? Where is it? Uh, La Catrina Señora de los Muertos. Uh, I'm not going to try to read this again, uh, but <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting take on makeup using makeup and costume makeup in, right. you know, as a way to talk about abstract portraiture. So very cool. Right, right. And kudos. That's his lovely wife Bree, who's an amazing human. She's awesome. And so that's hey, Bree. His, yep. All right, moving right along. Are we at the end of the road? No, we're not at the end of the road. We've got Lamb. Lamb says, my entry for photo critique number 145 theme, abstract portrait. The photo is taken outside the Pudu wet market in the old section of Kuala Lumpur. Oh, those wet markets. Uh, he says, oh, I'm not going to read all that. Okay, you guys can read all that. Let's judge the photo. Well, like my daughter says, don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> She's seven. <laughs> That's her new phrase. You know how they get these phrase that the phrases they repeat for, you know, yeah. a month or so yeah. and then they go away. Her phrase right now is don't judge me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. It's a, it's a really neat, it's a really neat shot. And yes, it's, it's definitely abstract. Um, I would say to increase the abstractness of this flip the image horizontally so that the word Nikon would be mirrored. So it would look backwards and that may, that may give a little bit of an oddity to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I like the treatment, the black and white, the softness, uh, the pixelization like this, this is definitely very, very abstract. Mm -hmm. And for somebody that knows this person, they're going to recognize them. So that's where the portrait part of it comes in, right? Like you, Oh, that's, that's definitely unique to this person, hairstyle and the watch and, you know things like that. Yep. Yeah. I just I I think I would have knocked whatever this structure is in the background. I probably would have knocked that back a little bit because it's 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 a trap, right? It's making me go over there. I'm looking at the face mm-hmm. and I'm looking over here and, and then I look down here like what the heck is going on back there, right? So I want to I want to be less distracted by what's happening there, thereby making me more interested in our subject versus what's what's about to right. attack him from the back. Right. I agree. Yeah. No, but a fun shot. Yeah. Yeah. Cool shot. (laughs) Steve is trying to figure out what the watch is, what kind of watch it is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right. And thank you, Lamb. All right. Next up, Mark Harris, he says, for abstract portrait topic, a crop of a photograph, photograph of model Hannah made with a fisheye lens and one studio light. I'll post a full version in the not safe for work area. Cool. Let's take a look. 
I like that. What you know what I really love about this is the large pupil. I really love shooting um, in low light and seeing those pupils just gigantic because we almost never see those. And I think that I think that looks very cool. Um, I'm trying to think about like how this would be how we could crop this to make it more abstract. I feel like look, it could be a little bit tighter. Um, but as it's presented, I, I, I really enjoy this. I wish the mm -hmm. eye was sharper. Um, yeah, because that's the one thing we look, well, we look at the whole thing, but I feel like the sharpest part of this image is right here, right? Or kind of on this plane, maybe. Yeah. Right there, like the, when the, it should the, be right here, it feels like, because that's her eye. Right. And, and what could be done with this is to layer on some, you know, some effect, um, some texture or something to to sort of overall soften or distract us from the sharpness that's on the right hand side or the top right hand side of the body and not in the eye and then draw our attention to the eye by the brightness and the shadows within the image. And so, um, you know, maybe I'm trying to think about like a, like a distressed texture over this, like a dirty Polaroid or something. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that, yeah, yeah. And then, and then we wouldn't, we wouldn't see sharpness anymore. We wouldn't be worried about what was in focus or what wasn't. We would just see the, the dramatic element, the abstract element of it. Mm -hmm. the gr like a grunge yeah, type like texture. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to be extravagant. It just, just something to draw our attention away from the fact that the eye's not in focus because mm -hmm. we keep, we keep going one to the highlight on her cheek, which I think is great. And then her eye is secondary. I think that's wonderful. But that focus or the perceived depth of field of the focus that's on her, we'll call it her her left shoulder camera right, I think draws this out of the frame. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Cool, moody shot, though. Very moody. Yeah, very good. You got to do a, uh, Troy, we got to do a critique where there's a, we, we have folks submit on a particular theme and then suggest a song that applies to that photograph. Right. Like oh, give, give your shot, give your shot a soundtrack. Like if you were looking at this and there's music playing, what would the music be? So they're like kind of crossing the streams of, of audio and, and visual and, you know, adding another mm -hmm. dimension. <clears throat> that would be fun. Yeah. Maybe yep. make that like a long term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right. And that was Mark Harris. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Well, yeah. F folks in the community, if you're not a member of Not Safe for Work area, go ahead and, and request entry and I'll approve you to get in there. That's that's where the images that are a little bit more risque uh, are posted. Uh, Raphael Timber Geek Swift says, I selfie eye abstract portraiture shot with this Nikon D5500. Let's take a look. Nice. Look at that. Nice. I feel like I know you better now, Raphael. <laughs> <laughs> Look into my eye. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting. Um, I, I'm trying to decide, you know, how how to better process this. I feel like there could be a little more crop, you know, of, on the right hand side, and I don't know that we need so much forehead. I mean, if we want to leave the forehead in there, then I think it should be burned down considerably. Mm -hmm. you know yeah um, yeah yeah no i was gonna say these these kinds of shots when you're really close and there's so much detail and texture and character in the in the model this is one of those shots where i think color does this this shot a disservice because you want to you want to lean into the texture and the and just the detail who cares about the color we care about the detail of the shot and the hairs and the pores and the wrinkles and all that stuff and i think you can lean into those in black and white and even accentuate them right with some with some clarity or contrast or however you want to do it you can make those really pop so that it's a i meant to make this a uh, you know, an image that talks to the character of this shot and the, the, you know, the knowledge and the experience that are, that this, a shot like this kind of illustrates in an older person. Right. So, right. And, and again, you know, this is one of those that there's a point of focus that isn't the eye. Um, yeah, it's so, the eyebrow, right? It's like right here. That's somewhere. Yeah. 
So realistically, the subject or the, the hook or the main draw in this image is the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. eye is secondary. And then, or actually the forehead and the eyebrow and then the eye. So consider where you want your viewer to look. Yeah, for sure. Cool shot, though. Very, very interesting take on the abstract portraiture topic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. definitely. All right. And next up is Ernest. Ernest says, abstract portraiture, too old, too fast. All the best. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, and Ernest, was, he sent me a message asking me if we could switch the backgrounds to black uh, from from white, uh, unfortunately, I can't do it. Not in at least in this iteration because we're we're basically just screen sharing the community, and I have no control over how these images are displayed within Mighty Networks. But down the road, who knows? We may, you know, things are always evolving <laughs> with how we do these yes, things. Yeah. So there may, you know, maybe we'll we'll take them out, put them in a gallery, and share the gallery. But for now, um, we're sharing basically the same screen you look at when you're inside of the Twip Pro community. So right, this is the right. first shot I mean, that's a composite, right? This is like the very first one that's that's leaning into, you could do whatever the hell you want. They're your pixels. Tell a story. And he told a story about aging and, you know, yeah, it's pretty cool. What do you think? I love it. I I really enjoy this image a lot. Um, I think that there's there's symmetry, there's balance, there's color harmony. Um, we have we have a subject, we have a secondary subject, we have, you know, focus that draws our attention in. The image reads wonderfully well because, you know, we sort of read the image from the top left. And as we go through that, that DNA coil, like we're following that out of the frame, it's soft in the corners. I think that he did uh, a fantastic job. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoy everything about this. Yep. yep. Even, even without the commentary, even without the title of, you know, too old, too fast type of thing. I mean, I still think there's a lot of story that that anybody could pour into this so mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's 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 generic enough to be almost stock photography right in a way that this could lend itself right, to yeah. news stories about anything related to dna or aging or genetics or virology or anything it could all kind of flow in that all you got to do is put like a little little virus you know, floating 3D icon in there somewhere. And now it's suddenly about viruses, right? And how they attack. Right. So, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I like it. I even like the the kind of cyan overtone that he put in here, the cyan and greens. It's very intentional. And it looks, it looks like he built this with 100% intent, including the aggressive dark border around it, which I don't mind at all in this, in this context. Right. I don't mind it. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really like it. Um, <clears throat> My only nitpick is that on the subject's right eye, camera left, um, there is a, a line of like where two elements, you know, that, that edge, I think, needs to be blended better. Right in the corner right. of the left eye. Yeah. See, right there's that, that vertical sort of almost diagonal line right there where you've got some cyan form on the right kind of yeah. blending in with the eye. Mm -hmm. I, I, it just everything else is so soft. <clears throat> And maybe blend that in under the eye a little bit better to kind of soften it. But, you know, that's a, a little bit of a nitpick. I, I do really enjoy that the eyes, I can see the whites next to the irises on the eyes. And I feel, you know, like they're looking up and out. So right away, I get a sense of where this where this individual is maybe, you know, being introspective. And um, it works. Yeah, it really works yeah. well. Yeah, it's fun. It's very fun. Yep. Very cool. Thank you, Ernest. I appreciate that. Take it. And that's it. I believe that's the last one. Yeah, because you posted this one. You want to tell us about this shot? This was your kind of setting the stage for abstract portrait. Yeah, this this was an attempt um, at trying to find a way to to show portraits differently. And this was an individual that we photographed on on the pier. This is a homeless man from I don't know, probably twenty years ago. Photographed this on one of the original <clears throat> Kodak digital cameras. And I was just I was just playing with it. And I just really wanted to draw us through the the pieces of a portrait of a man. So I created this for image competition. Um, it did not do very well. <laughs> I don't even think it merited. Uh, but that's okay. It, it's just a, it's just sort of a play on a traditional portrait. So I wanted something very geometric and abstract. So 
that's where I and went. real quick real quick on the technique for doing this you know i'm sure there's a million ways to, to execute this how did you execute this to get the kind of three-dimensional um, yeah so what i did is i started with the original portrait and then i would select the area that i wanted to to work with and i created a new layer and then i would transform that so like the eyes are the original size and they line up with the nose a little bit but then the bit below that i might have resized it smaller or bigger because i wanted it to have a little bit of distortion but i wanted it to kind of feel like it aligned so that was it it took me it literally took me probably 20 hours to get to this iteration of it because i experimented with a lot of stuff that was horrible <laughs> <laughs> it's the art that's the art you gotta walk over hot yeah. coals yeah cool i like it i would i would have given this a higher score i like it it's cool and this is this kind of goes towards like we were talking about Raphael's image the dropping color out of it to to <laughs> accentuate the personality and the texture and the you know the the experience lines let's call them of a subject I, I think you that's what you did here and if this had been color i would have been distracted by whatever colors were present in the image but as it is i'm looking at his eyes i'm looking at i'm looking exactly where you want me to look so it's working it's working right. really well and each layer is slightly darker than the previous layer so the eyes are the lightest layer and they just get darker as you go back um because I wanted to make sure that you landed on his eyes first. Nice. So. Good work. And I think that when we talk about competition and we talk about images, um, I think this is a good example of where we're so, you know, m most judges and competitions and people in general, we're used to seeing a particular predictable style. And when that style doesn't fall within that, a lot of people just go, oh, I don't, I don't like it. It's not what right. I expect. Right. So, right. But that's art, though, right? Art is subjective, yeah, and of course. people have opinions. And you know, as humans go, most a, a lot of humans, not most, a lot of humans aren't afraid to share those opinions with others, whether they they're asked for or not. <laughs> whether they're asked or not, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, cool. That, that was a relatively quick critique. What are your? Uh, you have a favorite? I have a favorite. I have it, I have it up on my screen already. Oh, I oh, see your message. Uh, yeah, I see. Okay, let me bring it up. I think we have the same favorite, the ladies and gentlemen. Drum roll, please. Here we go. Here is this week's favorite shot of the crop. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Here nice. we go. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I like sent uh, Frederick a text real quick because I, did, I didn't want to overly influence, you know, verbally. So I'm like, I just have a little text. Hey, this is my favorite. <laughs> I already had it up. I already had this shot up as my as my favorite. So that's cool. Yeah. Cool. And I think that uh, I think that having our bubbles in the corner really add to this image. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this is this is how this should be printed like, with us. <laughs> I know. We're looking at it. Am I looking yeah. the right way? There we go. Very nice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we can do the wall. <laughs> do the wall, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So what, uh, and congratulations, Ernest, on, on uh, being this week's favorite. Really, really nice work. Even though we weren't able to show it on a black background, but it's still um, amazing. So what are your, uh, what, what's our critique topic for next week, Troy Miller? Um, our final critique topic is botanical. And I know that uh, there's going to be some questions about uh, what is botanical. So if you look it up, basically it's anything, it's anything that has to do with a plant. It can, you know, like there's an, an extract of a plant can be referred to like as a noun that's botanical. So it could be, you know, the essence of, you know, chamomile or whatever, you know, that could be botanical or it could be anything, just a plant, anything hmm. related to plants. So. Interesting. So could it be, could, could it be, uh, like a shirt that's made out of hemp? <laughs> Yeah, there yeah, you go. I mean, That's anyway, botanical. It's, it's one of the you know I said early on that I tried I tried on purpose to pick topics that had a lot of specificity and then other topics that were wide open for interpretation so that uh, so that you guys could play and experiment. So I love it. the final one is botanical. So botanical. All right, and Stephen Sharp says got my photo ready for botanical. All right, let's see what you got, Stephen. He's got like, a, yeah, I'm excited to see because Stephen has a range, so this should be that should be interesting. 
Yeah. Uh, ginger yeah. Ginger Bearding says tannins used in boat building. Yeah, right. It, they come. You said anything that comes from plants. Tannins come from plants. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Pronsky. Something nice and nice and uh, nice and um, vast and you know inclusive in lots of things. So yeah. I'm interested in yeah. seeing what everybody comes up with. Yeah. Interesting. Now, now you got me thinking because I'm like. Almost everything can be plant-based, right? So, you know, could, I mean, how abstract can we go back? Can we say, well, you know, fossil fuels <laughs> technically <laughs> come from dead animals, which ate plants <laughs> at some point. Well, <laughs> I would just say to whoever's creating their portraits, uh, you know, be aware of the judges. I mean, you know, we only can grasp so much. So <laughs> don't go too far outside our ability to understand it. <laughs> For sure. Otherwise. For sure. Oh, yeah. I love it. Love it. Cool, man. All right. Well, it looks like we're at the end of this critique. We did uh, this one went pretty quick. We're ending right on the hour. We started relatively on the hour. So, um, yeah. I want to echo what you said about safety, you know, be safe. Uh, let's make it to, let's make it to Valentine's day people. <laughs> so one, one, one holiday at a time, we're going to claw for it. You know, let's, let's get through, yeah, let's yeah. get through Christmas and new years. And, and then the next milestone is let's make it to Valentine's day. And then, you know, the next one after that, but yeah, but enjoy your Christmas, enjoy your Christmas, enjoy your relatives, however you plan to engage with them. And, um, you know, we'll be here. So Twip Pro community, you know where to find us on Friday, Christmas Day. We're going to be right here on uh, doing our doing our member mixer and and some special things that I have planned. So <laughs> so we'll yep. see you guys Friday at 6 p.m. U.S. Pacific time. And uh, we'll just hang out, have a glass of wine and wish wish each other happy holidays and brag about the gifts that we got or didn't get or lament <laughs> the gifts that we didn't get. Right? Yes. <laughs> I yeah. really wanted that pony. Yeah. No one got it. <laughs> so, so cool. Stephen Sharp says he's got a birthday coming up. Yeah, we got to make it to that birthday, Stephen Sharp. We got to make it to the birthday. Cool. Right. All right. All right. Well, we'll leave it right there, Troy Miller. And uh, yeah, so next week, Friday or uh, next Monday's critique, that'll be botanical. Anything that is derived from plants that is or derived from plants. Right. So. Yep. Which is yep. almost anything, is because uh, I could go, I could, I could argue that almost everything is derived from plants. <laughs> because pretty much, because yeah, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for oxygen. I'm just saying, so we're kind of derived from plants, so or the food we eat, yep. right? So it's a big best. topic. Yeah, it's an it open a big topic. topic. Yep. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming on and joining us for this critique. We're going to do this every week, every Monday at noon Pacific. We do this. And uh, if you're a member of the Twit Pro community, we hang out um, currently one time a week, but soon, probably more than that. Um, if you want to join the Twit Pro community, just head over to, uh, I think it's at members.thisweekinphoto.com. All right, folks. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Stephen, of course. I knew Stephen had to get a final jab in there. Let me bring it up. Let me bring up Stephen's final jab. I know he's over there smiling. Titanium is not from plants. <laughs> okay. All right. We may be able to argue that. So let's let's see if we can find a way that ti titanium is somehow tied to plants in some way. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Sharp. All right, folks, we're going to leave it right there and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot, Troy Miller. See you All next right. time. Yeah. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Be safe. This is Twitter.